After becoming the youngest rider in history to win a European Grand Prix, then winning a world championship at 17, the American Motocross Championship at age 20, as well as showcasing a personality that has made him the most followed athlete in the sport. It seems Ken Roxon was born with a talent that bends the traditional rules of racing. What worked for Ricky and what worked for Dungey, that worked for those guys, but I can't imagine one program works for everybody. Kenny, there can be a lot of chaos around him, but it doesn't seem to affect him much. Without wanting this to sound stuck up, in my eyes, I'm very different than anybody that's out there. I have so much faith in him. When we're sitting on the start line, you're nervous and stressed, but deep down, I know everything's going to be good because this kid knows how to ride a bike. He knows what he's meant to do. Yeah, I do go in the hills. I do go bowling. I go surf. If anything, it makes me a better rider. I go to the track happy, and I go fast, and I have confidence, and I feel like nobody can beat me. In the 2015 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Series, Roxon will attempt to defend his title against Eli Tomac, Jason Anderson, and Ryan Dungey, as the departure of Ryan Villapoto to the Grand Prix Series in Europe has made room for the next American motocross icon. Every year it gets harder to run that edge. You got up and coming guys that are prepared to run that edge more than you would like to. Come on, boys, Ken! To be dominant, that doesn't just come easy. From 1996 to 2010, Roger DeCoster played a major role in bringing Suzuki to the pinnacle of the motocross industry. Suzuki gave Ken Roxon his first major sponsorship at nine years old in Germany. Not long after, Roger and Ken began to plan a future of dominance together. We were in contact on a regular basis about the bikes. We started building the engines for him here in the US and shipping them to Kenny. Roger DeCoster always said, hey, when are you going to come over? Are you going to come over soon? And I was like 12, 13, 14. And I'm like, well, I hope at one point our plan was to be together with Suzuki. At the moment, Roxon was planning on moving to the United States for full-time racing. DeCoster and Suzuki parted ways, and Roger was hired at KTM. In order to finally work with the motocross legend, Ken followed him onto the new brand. The first step coming to the yes was, I'm going with Roger DeCoster. I do still believe that if I wouldn't have had that team behind me from the first day I came over, I think it would have been a whole different story for sure. After being the most dominant rider at his age in Europe, Roxon was well behind his American competitors in his first year in the US. Baggett now is going after Roxon. Baggett goes wide to the outside. Baggett goes into the number one ride. It was just so difficult. The travel, the heat, I basically just showed up and tried. Luckily, I had one of the best teams behind me. Being in Europe at the time, I saw him growing up and coming through the ranks, and I knew this kid is something special. When I heard he was signing with KTM and coming to the US, I went straight to Roger and said, if Kenny's coming, I want to be with him. I wanted to win championships too, as a mechanic. For me, it's been the best years in my mechanic and career working with Ken at KTM. Following his initial year in the US, Ken was able to win multiple races and a championship each of the next two years. Despite all this success, he began to consider a move from KTM back to Suzuki for the 2015 season. That was Ken's contract year. His contract was up and a lot of teams were after him and he filled me in on everything that was going on. And right from the very beginning, he said, Whatever happens, you have to come with me. I'm not going anywhere without you. And, and I just said, I'm so happy at KTM. This is the, the best team I've ever been on. The people are great, the company's great. Roger's unbelievable to work for. We were surprised because he was doing good, you know, and our bike was not perfect, but Kenny was in contention for Supercross and he won the outdoors. So I don't think you could say that our bike was a handicap. That's what they gave us as a reason. I grew up on a Suzuki. I think it has a lot to do with that. I just know already how it handles. We just couldn't get him happy from a suspension standpoint on our bike. It seemed like no matter what we did, he had somewhat made up his mind already. I needed a change. That was very simple. And it did break my heart that, you know, I had to leave the people basically that I love, the team that I've had great, great memories with. 
but just winning a championship is not it. I want to win championships having fun and not complaining about my bike. So sometimes I just have to be selfish and make the decision that I want. He came to me and said, I think I'm going to go to RCH. And I was like, man. Called Roger and Ian over, and we sat down, and I said, I've decided to go with Ken. You can see the expression on someone's face when it's not what they want to hear. My last day, I remember clearing out my workspace and all that, and just saying goodbye to everyone. Feels like a part of me is lost. I could not offer him what Ken offered him. Financially, I'm sure that was a big difference because Ken saw him probably as the only guy that he could take along with him and give him some comfort feeling. I don't think Ken knew many people there, never had worked with any of them at him. I took a gamble, I think. Leaving something so rock solid, and then to come to a private team, you never know. A private team, like they lose a major sponsor, they are in hard times. The balance and everything's good. The little stiff, I think. It's simple. Does he want to wrench for whoever's in the KTM team right now? And it was definitely not Dungey. Or does he want to come with me? He knows what I can do, and that's the ultimate thing you need to be clear about. You want to win races. You want to win championships. I left KTM to come here purely because of Ken. I see so much potential in him to be one of the greats of the sport. Ken's new team, RCH Racing, was originally called Hart and & Huntington, and the company is best personified in owner Kerry Hart, who left competitive racing to pioneer the more counterculture freestyle motocross movement. Kenny Watson was the guy I started the team with, and we may have been at Spearmint Rhino way we figured it out was like, look, there was about 20,000 people a race coming through the pits, and we're gonna create such an awesome pit experience that at the end of the night, they're gonna be like, yeah, Villapoto won, and I can't really remember who got second, but did you go by the Hart and Huntington pits? And they had smoke machines and DJs and go-go dancers, and they were giving away T-shirts and playing rock star beer pong. I knew I wanted to be there for the long haul because there was also a piece of me that wanted to jam it right down all these people's throats, these same people that are still in the industry that were there when I was racing that wouldn't give me a set of handlebars, let alone a ride. To be honest with you, when Kenny left, I thought, man, this is a long way away because Ken showed a lot of these flashes of speed and brilliance. I thought, okay, he's gonna be our next guy, but um, I was wrong. Veteran Ryan Dungey had largely faded from championship discussions going into 2015. But after KTM built him a new machine, and Ryan hired renowned trainer Alden Baker, Dungey dominated the Indoor Supercross Championship, taking the title with three rounds remaining. I saw some lines you're doing there, like, textbook, man. Yeah, it, it, like, nice entry speed, and then you really get on the gas early. Ryan is definitely a different Ryan than we had in the past years. He was always good and very consistent, but the way he raced this year, he is definitely on another level. Ryan is capable of winning the outdoors as well. Although RCH has expanded their racing department in recent years, with the additions of co-owner Ricky Carmichael, Carmichael's partnership with Factory Suzuki Machines, and former IndyCar team manager Mark Johnson, RCH had never finished in the top three in an AMA race at the time Ken Roxon and Kelly Lumgare signed with them. We don't have a track record yet. We don't have race win records. All of our years moving forward are gonna be based off of this year. If he wins, he was the best rider on the motorcycle that day. And if he loses, they're gonna look at the team and look at the bike. I mean, that was a very serious pill to swallow. I had faith in them from day one. Reading what people's thoughts were is a whole nother story. They said I wouldn't even get into the top seven. I wasn't worried at all, because I know no matter what bike I go on that I'm gonna be a badass. I truly believe that and I put that in my head and that's exactly how it's gonna be no matter where I go. I think it's not the right choice what he did. Winning one race, two races is one thing, but we have to see if he can do multiple championships. Run it in real deep. You hardly have to shut off. Just keep it thin. Now, my job is to try to help my riders beat him.
next time on MX Nation. Bad news, trying to find Ken Roxon, 15th now. Come on! Defending champ dealing with a back injury, has gone backwards. Unfortunately, this week leading up to the race, an old injuries flared up. It's the deal with his back, and uh, it's affecting his whole, whole body. It's absolutely devastating. Coming into Hangtown as a champion, I know that. It's, uh, words can't describe what kind of feeling that is. Eli Tomac. This is just a dominant performance. A minute, 11 second lead over Dungey. So bad. Well, you gotta find something that you can race and be consistent on. Yeah. yeah. Without reinventing the wheel and panicking and all that. We haven't lost a race by that degree in a long, long, long time.